Tip Top 10's present Stephen Hawking biography. Scientist Stephen Hawking was known for his groundbreaking work with black holes and relativity, and was the author of several popular science books including A Brief History of Time. Stephen Hawking, January 8, 1942 to March 14, 2018, was a British scientist, professor, and author who performed groundbreaking work in physics and cosmology, and whose books helped to make science accessible to everyone. At age 21, while studying cosmology at the University of Cambridge, he was diagnosed with a myotrophic lateral sclerosis. Over the years, Stephen Hawking wrote, or co-wrote a total of 15 books. A few of the most noteworthy include, A Brief History of Time He Universe in a Nutshell A Brief A History of Time The Grand Design and many more. At the age of 21, Stephen Hawking was diagnosed with a myotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, or Laugerig's disease. In a very simple sense, the nerves that controlled his muscles were shutting down. At the time, doctors gave him two and a half years to live. Hawking first began to notice problems with his physical health. While he was at Oxford on occasion he would trip and fall, or slur his speech he didn't look into the problem until 1963, during his first year at Cambridge. For the most part, Hawking had kept these symptoms to himself. But when his father took notice of the condition, he took Hawking to see a doctor. For the next two weeks, the 21-year-old college student made his home at a medical clinic, where he underwent a series of tests. They took a muscle sample from my arm, stuck electrodes into me, and injected some radio-opaque fluid into my spine, and watched it going up and down with x-rays, as they tilted the bed, he once said. After all that, they didn't tell me what I had, except that it was not multiple sclerosis, and that I was an atypical case. Eventually, however, doctors did diagnose Hawking with the early stages of ALS it was devastating news for him and his family, but a few events prevented him from becoming completely despondent. The first of these came while Hawking was still in the hospital. There, he shared a room with a boy suffering from leukemia. Relative to what his roommate was going through, Hawking later reflected, his situation seemed more tolerable. Not long after he was released from the hospital, Hawking had a dream that he was going to be executed. He said this dream made him realize that there were still things to do with his life. In a sense, Hawking's disease helped turn him into the noted scientist he became. Before the diagnosis, Hawking hadn't always focused on his studies. Before my condition was diagnosed, I had been very bored with life he said. There had not seemed to be anything worth doing. With the sudden realization that he might not even live long enough to earn his PhD, Hawking brought himself into his work and research. As physical control over his body diminished, he'd be forced to use a wheelchair by 1969. The effects of his disease started to slow down. Over time, however, Hawking's ever-expanding career was accompanied by an ever-worsening physical state. By the mid-1970s, the Hawking family had taken in one of Hawking's graduate students to help manage his care and work. He could still feed himself and get out of bed, but virtually everything else required assistance. In addition, his speech had become increasingly slurred, so that only those who knew him well could understand him. In 1985 he lost his voice for good following a tracheotomy. The resulting situation required 24-hour nursing care for the acclaimed physicist. It also put in peril Hawking's ability to do his work. The predicament caught the attention of a California computer programmer who had developed a speaking program that could be directed by head or eye movement. The invention allowed Hawking to select words on a computer screen that were then passed through a speech synthesizer. At the time of its introduction, Hawking, who still had use of his fingers, selected his words with a handheld clicker. Eventually, with virtually all control of his body gone, 
Hawking directed the program through a cheek muscle attached to a sensor. Through the program, and the help of assistants, Stephen Hawking continued to write at a prolific rate. His work included numerous scientific papers, of course, but also information for the non-scientific community. Hawking's health remained a constant concern a worry that was heightened in 2009, when he failed to appear at a conference in Arizona, because of a chest infection. In April, Hawking, who had already announced he was retiring after 30 years from the post of Lucasian Professor of Mathematics at Cambridge, was rushed to the hospital for being what university officials described as gravely ill, though he later made a full recovery. On March 14, 2018, Hawking finally succumbed to the disease that was supposed to have killed him more than 50 years earlier. A family spokesman confirmed that the iconic scientist died at his home in Cambridge, England. The news touched many in his field and beyond. Fellow theoretical physicist and author Lawrence Cross tweeted, A star just went out in the cosmos. We have lost an amazing human being. Stephen Hawking fought and tamed the cosmos bravely for 76 years and taught us all something important about what it truly means to celebrate about being human. Hawking's children followed with a statement, We are deeply saddened that our beloved father passed away today. He was a great scientist and an extraordinary man whose work and legacy will live on for many years. His courage and persistence with his brilliance and humor inspired people across the world. He once said, it would not be much of a universe if it wasn't home to the people you love. We will miss him forever. Later in the month, it was announced that Hawking's ashes would be interred at Westminster Abbey in London, alongside other scientific luminaries like Newton and Charles Darwin. The eldest of Frank and Isabel Hawking's four children. Stephen Hawking was born into a family of thinkers. His Scottish mother earned her way into Oxford University in the 1930s a time when few women were able to go to college. His father, another Oxford graduate, was a respected medical researcher with a specialty in tropical diseases. Stephen Hawking's birth came at an inopportune time for his parents, who didn't have much money. The political climate was also tense, as England was dealing with World War II and the onslaught of German bombs. In an effort to seek a safer place, Isabel returned to Oxford to have the couple's first child. The Hawkings would go on to have two other children, Mary, 1943, and Philippa, 1947. And their second son, Edward, was adopted in 1956. The Hawkings, as one close family friend described them, were an eccentric bunch. Dinner was often eaten in silence, each of the Hawkings intently reading a book. The family car was an old London taxi, and their home in St Albans was a three-story fixer-upper that never quite got fixed. The Hawkings also housed bees in the basement and produced fireworks in the greenhouse. In 1950, Hawking's father took work to manage the division of parasitology at the National Institute of Medical Research and spent the winter months in Africa doing research. He wanted his eldest child to go into medicine, but at an early age, Hawking showed a passion for science and the sky. That was evident to his mother, who, along with her children, often stretched out in the backyard on summer evenings to stare up at the stars. Stephen always had a strong sense of wonder, she remembered. And I could see that the stars would draw him. Hawking was also frequently on the go. With his sister Mary, Hawking, who loved to climb, devised different entry routes into the family home. He loved to dance and also took an interest in rowing, becoming a team coxswain in college. Early in his academic life, Hawking, while recognized as bright, was not an exceptional student. During his first year at St. Albans School, he was third from the bottom of his class. But Hawking focused on pursuits outside of school, 
he loved board games, and he and a few close friends created new games of their own. During his teens, Hawking, along with several friends, constructed a computer out of recycled parts for solving rudimentary mathematical equations. Hawking entered University College at Oxford University at the age of 17. Although he expressed a desire to study mathematics, Oxford didn't offer a degree in that specialty, so Hawking gravitated toward physics, and, more specifically, cosmology. By his own account, Hawking didn't put much time into his studies. He would later calculate that he averaged about an hour a day focusing on school. And yet he didn't really have to do much more than that. In 1962, he graduated with honors in natural science and went on to attend Trinity Hall at Cambridge University for a PhD in cosmology. In 1968, Hawking became a member of the Institute of Astronomy in Cambridge. The next few years were a fruitful time for Hawking and his research. In 1973, he published his first highly technical book, The Large Scale Structure of Space Time, with G. F. R. Ellis. In 1979, Hawking found himself back at Cambridge University, where he was named to one of teaching's most renowned posts, dating back to 1663, the Lucasian Professor of Mathematics. In 1974, Hawking's research turned him into a celebrity within the scientific world when he showed that black holes aren't the information vacuums that scientists had thought they were. In simple terms, Hawking demonstrated that matter, in the form of radiation, can escape the gravitational force of a collapsed star. Another young cosmologist, Roger Penrose, had earlier discovered groundbreaking findings about the fate of stars and the creation of black holes, which tapped into Hawking's own fascination with how the universe began. The pair then began working together to expand upon Penrose's earlier work, setting Hawking on a career course marked by awards, notoriety and distinguished titles that reshaped the way the world thinks about black holes and the universe. When Hawking's radiation theory was born, the announcement sent shock waves of excitement through the scientific world. Hawking was named a Fellow of the Royal Society at the age of 32, and later earned the prestigious Albert Einstein Award, among other honors. He also earned teaching stints at Caltech in Pasadena, California, where he served as visiting professor, and at Gonville and Caius College in Cambridge. In August 2015, Hawking appeared at a conference in Sweden to discuss new theories about black holes and the vexing information paradox. Addressing the issue of what becomes of an object that enters a black hole, Hawking proposed that information about the physical state of the object is stored in 2D form within an outer boundary, known as the event horizon. Noting that black holes are not the eternal prisons they were once thought, he left open the possibility that the information could be released into another universe. In 2007, at the age of 65, Hawking made an important step toward space travel. While visiting the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, he was given the opportunity to experience an environment without gravity. Over the course of two hours over the Atlantic, Hawking, a passenger on a modified Boeing 727, was freed from his wheelchair to experience bursts of weightlessness. Pictures of the freely floating physicist splashed across newspapers around the globe. The zero gravity part was wonderful, and the high gravity part was no problem. I could have gone on and on. Space, here I come, he said. Hawking was scheduled to fly to the edge of space as one of Sir Richard Branson's pioneer space tourists. He said in a 2007 statement, Life on Earth is at the ever-increasing risk of being wiped out by a disaster, such as sudden global warming, nuclear war, a genetically engineered virus or other dangers. I think the human race has no future if it doesn't go into space. I therefore want to encourage public interest in space. 
If there is such a thing as a rock star scientist, Stephen Hawking embodied it. His forays into popular culture included guest appearances on The Simpsons, Star Trek, The Next Generation, a comedy spoof with comedian Jim Carrey on Late Night with Conan O'Brien, and even a recorded voiceover on the Pink Floyd song Keep Talking. In 1992, Oscar-winning filmmaker Carreral Morris released a documentary about Hawking's life, aptly titled A Brief History of Time. Other TV and movie appearances included The Big Bang Theory The Theory of Everything Genius and many more. In 2011, Hawking's had participated in a trial of a new headband-styled device called the iBrain. The device is designed to read the wearer's thoughts by picking up waves of electrical brain signals, which are then interpreted by a special algorithm, according to an article in the New York Times. This device could be a revolutionary aid to people with ALS. In 2014, Hawking, among other top scientists, spoke out about the possible dangers of artificial intelligence, or AI, calling for more research to be done on all of possible ramifications of AI. Their comments were inspired by the Johnny Depp film Transcendence, which features a clash between humanity and technology. Success in creating AI would be the biggest event in human history, the scientists wrote. Unfortunately, it might also be the last, unless we learn how to avoid the risks. The group warned of a time when this technology would be outsmarting financial markets, outinventing human researchers, outmanipulating human leaders, and developing weapons we cannot even understand. Hawking reiterated this stance while speaking at a technology conference in Lisbon, Portugal, in November 2017. Noting how AI could potentially make gains in wiping out poverty and disease, but could also lead to such theoretically destructive actions as the development of autonomous weapons, he said, we cannot know if we will be infinitely helped by AI, or ignored by it and sidelined, or conceivably destroyed by it. In July 2015, Hawking held a news conference in London to announce the launch of a project called Breakthrough Listen. Funded by Russian entrepreneur Yuri Milner, Breakthrough Listen was created to devote more resources to the discovery of extraterrestrial life. In October 2017, Cambridge University posted Hawking's 1965 doctoral thesis, Properties of Expanding Universes, to its website. An overwhelming demand for access promptly crashed the university server, though the document still fielded a staggering 60,000 views before the end of its first day online. Here are the quick facts about Hawking he was born on the 300th anniversary of the death of the famous scientist Galilea. He has been married twice and has three children. Stephen has been on several TV shows including The Simpsons and The Big Bang Theory. The book A Brief History of Time only has one equation, Einstein's famous E equals MC2. Hawking has co-written several children's books with his daughter Lucy including George's Cosmic Treasure Hunt and George and the Big Bang. He received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2009. He hopes to travel to space one day and has trained with NASA on their zero-gravity aircraft.